Hello, my name is Kate Hanch. My pronouns are she and her, and I am blessed to serve as an associate pastor here at First. Welcome friends here and around the world. Well, today I would like to read from a published author from our church, Brother Jean Davis. She's a relatively new church member. She joined a few years ago, but she is a retired United Methodist elder from the state of Texas. And you may know some of her family members at church. Well, I got Brother Jean's permission to read this. And first, you might be wondering, why does she call herself Brother Jean? Well, she explains it here. She says, as a young teenager, I knew God was calling me to be a preaching minister, but it was in the 1940s and that seemed like a ridiculous idea for a girl. Since I had musical ability, I decided that being a minister of music would be a good compromise. 40 years later, after two music degrees, working as an organist, choir director, soloist, and public school teacher and minister's wife, I knew that compromise wasn't really working. So when she was 55, her husband, who was also a preacher, Dave, um, convinced her to go back to school and study theology to become a pastor. So she decides to do it. And she said that during her first semester at Perkins School of Theology, her husband, Dave, delighted in kidding her about becoming Brother Jean. He had always discouraged his various congregations from calling him Brother Dave, so it was extra funny for him to be calling her Brother Jean. I think that's fun, and I can relate as a woman in ministry who has faced some resistance along the way, though not near as much as Brother Jean. While her book has touched lives so much that is now being made into an audiobook. And there was one story in here that struck me and could apply to those of us who are worshiping in line and sheltering in place. And it's from chapter six, The Presentness of God, called Magic Moments. Brother Jean says, once again, I have discovered proof that there is something magical, magically special about Sunday morning worship. Since I was out of commission on a recent Sunday, I turned on the TV for services at First Methodist in Fort Worth. It crossed my mind that I could just lie in bed and read and no one would know the difference but there is always at least professional curiosity to prod me into checking out the way others order their services. I also knew that I needed a lift to my spirits. Being in pain is discouraging. So I watched, but with the minimum of enthusiasm. At one point in my half-hearted viewing, when I was thinking about how much I would like a Coke, suddenly, was I was aware of something the preacher was saying. I don't even remember what it was now, but it did for me one thing I needed most. It brought me into the presence of God. A thrill of joy ran through my being as I breathed in the recognition of God's love and care for me in this magical moment, in this midst of pain and discouragement. Later, I remembered other times when I had been touched by God, not on some major occasion, but as I was just there in church or watching on TV without consciously looking for God's touch. She says, I remember how in 1983, my husband was reading a familiar scripture during his worship service, and I was suddenly overwhelmed with understanding about who I was in relationship to God. The passage was Galatians 2.20. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 
My whole life was changed by the revelation that came to me as I sat in that Sunday morning worship service. Many other times could be noted, but they all point to the fact that I desperately need to be available to God and worship each Sunday morning, no matter where I am. How can I make it through the week without being touched in a special way by God's presence? How can I miss out on such a blessing? Sure, God can touch us at any time, but by setting aside the special time, we honor God and we prepare our hearts to be touched, to be made new. Instead of thinking of Sunday morning worship as an obligation, a duty, think of it as a magic time when Christians wait for God together. I didn't always have this understanding of worship. I was a perfectionist. Everything, the preaching, the music, the setting needed to be just right. In fact, as a college student long ago, I was an organist in a church where I felt totally unable to worship because of the minister's terrible preaching and a drunken choir director's inept leadership. Well, thank goodness we don't have that today, Brother Gene. My father became very stern when he heard my complaining. He said, Jeannie, the preacher and the choir director have nothing whatsoever to do with whether you experience God's presence in that Sunday morning worship. All that matters is that you lovingly be leveling open to, for God's word to speak to you. And it always will. And he was right. It always has when I have been open. I invite you to experience the magic of this kind of openness, an openness of sharing and of love as you participate in the community of faith, the church, warts and all. I love the story from Brother Jean. And it reminds me that even though I am at home when I log on to worship, that I am with you and I am with others and I can still experience God's presence. And I pray that you can do that today. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for Brother Jean and the gift that she is to our church. We pray that our hearts and minds and bodies can be open to you wherever we are, whether we worship in our pajamas or in our suits. God, we thank you for the gift to worship together virtually, and may we experience your presence in doing so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace, friends.